My name is Ryan Isaac. I am the Director of Cultural Arts at the San Diego Center for Jewish Culture at the Lawrence Family JCC Jacobs Family Campus. Uh, ordinarily, we would be at our JCC, but of course, given the current events, we have taken to this virtual platform. Here we are on Zoom and a welcome. Thank you all for, for being part of this. Uh, we're still working out some of the kinks. Um, I hope you bear with us, but I think tonight will be a pretty fun evening. Uh, don't forget, as for those of you, especially on video, with your video on, um, we can see you. So if you need a little more privacy, feel free to uh, hide your camera, hide the video. Um, also, feel free to stay on and, and smile with all of us. It's nice to see everybody here tonight. It's nice to be able to uh, bring some of, our, some of our events to the internet online like this. Uh, and again, thanks, thanks for being here. Um, you can also find some more of our virtual events on our website at lfjcc.org slash about slash virtual. Uh, we, the, the team at the JCC has put in a lot of effort, a lot of work over the last two weeks to uh, give people something to do, something to find in arts and ideas, sports and fitness for preschoolers, <laughs> for teens, uh, for Jewish studies across the board. So please check it out. There's a lot to go see there. Danny, we're still waiting for, for Chris to get his computer yep. going, but you know what, I, I will introduce you, Danny Menken. Uh, I met Danny and Chris about a month ago at our San Diego International Jewish Film Festival. Danny was the recipient of the Beacon Award uh, granted, given by our film selection committee. Uh, I think Judy of the committee, Judy Friedel, is here tonight. Thank you, Judy, for being here. And uh, in addition to being a film festival favorite of ours here, Danny has a number of accolades. He has an Israeli Academy Award for his film, 39 Pounds of Love. Uh, he's won a tremendous amount of other awards for a number of his films. Two of his films, Picture of His Life and Alsi, were screened at our film festival this year. Uh, Alsi not only opened our festival, but won the Audience Award for Best Documentary. So congrats again, Danny. It was a, it was a good haul for you at, at our festival this year. And uh, fortunately, it was a January festival, and we managed to, to get it all in and have a successful and fruitful one. Uh, Chris, who we're still waiting on, Chris Gubish, collaborated with Danny on a few of the soundtracks, including 39 Pounds of Love and the two that were at, that were at our festival, Alsi and Picture of His Life. Uh, Chris is an incredibly talented creative. Uh, music is just one of his talents. And I think when he does join us, he'll be able to tell us more about that. Uh, in the meantime, Danny, welcome. Let's start off. How are you? How's, how's everything going in LA? <laughs> everything is as usual. You know, we're home. Don't, we don't go out just like normal day. <laughs> I think, I think everything changed for everyone. And, uh, I think the unusual became the new, the new usual for people, <laughs> and we're adjusting. Uh, I think, you know, besides the fact that everyone is adjusting, uh, I think it's, uh, uh, there is kind of like a celebration of spirit, and uh, people are kind to each other, and uh, I think they're... Um, taking out some layers of ego. And I hope that end of things will continue, and, but just without anyone getting sick and everyone still being safe. So it reminds me when I was in Israel during war times or uh, when specifically when it was the Gulf War at the you know, beginning of the 90s, and uh, Iraq was sending missiles to Israel and we thought, oh my gosh, that's it, everything is over. And people started to be kind to each other until the war stopped and we continued fighting with each other. Right. <laughs> I've, I've spoken to a couple of people who are in Israel now and, and are, are quarantined. Growing up in Israel, does, did, did that prepare you more for situations like this? Do you, do you think that just in, by nature, the Israeli people have more discipline for uh, just sticking out something like this as opposed to much of the country yeah. that's ready to get, that wants to go back out and disregard the, 
the real the real health issues yeah i think so i think in israel there are, there are no not too many days of routine and a few years ago i was with my wife and then baby daughter and we were just in a routine of going to the shelter every other day because uh, there were rockets flowing into us and um, there is some kind of a sense of adjustment in israel and everything you know to move forward and i think Making movies and creating is one of the best ways to escape from that reality and probably from this reality. That's why uh, we're happy to be here. We're happy to talk about movies and uh, to distract people a little bit from from the news. Mm-hmm. And having been in your house now for the past two weeks or so, what has that done for you creatively and, and professionally? What, what plans were yeah. put aside and, and how have you been spending your time and your energy? So first, it's a miracle that we're talking for a few minutes and my kids still didn't go and say, hey, what's going on? What's going on? And then jump over me because they're, they're doing that uh, from time to time. I'm trying to wake up very early in the morning and write. I'm right now working on turning my documentaries into narratives. So I'm writing uh, Dolphin Boy, which is a documentary that I've worked on with uh, my friend Jonathan Neer, who's my partner also for Picture of His Life, which we have so- shown in the, at the, the opening of the San Diego Jewish Film Festival. And um, I'm also working on the narrative of On the Map, which is another film that uh, won many awards. And actually, if you guys are interested, I will let you know that on Sunday at noon Pacific time, we're going to have an event with Todd Roddy, Olsi Perry, and one of our executive producers, one of our wonderful executive producers for all the films, uh, Ori Eisen and myself so uh, if you're interested in that event you can sign in on our website heyjudeproductions.com that this is our website heyjudeproductions.com and all the films that we're going to talk about um, you can watch the trailers and if anyone is interested in one of their movies we're always happy to give especially now when people need content that's great and i know uh, a lot of us do know the story behind Hey Jude Productions, but for those who don't, would you mind just telling that very simple and sweet yeah. story? Yeah, I've, I've uh, had to choose a company <laughs> uh, about uh, 15 years ago, a little bit more than 15 years ago, when I sold my first international documentary, 39 Pounds of Love, which I've also worked with Chris Gubish on the music. I sold it to HBO, and uh, when uh, when we sold it, they said, you know, you need to have a company. And I said, oh, how should I call it? And uh, the line of Paul McCartney, take a sad song and make it better, came to my mind. I love the Beatles. I love Paul McCartney. And um, uh, that's also the theme of what I'm doing. In 39 Pounds of Love, or All Sea, or Picture of His Life, Dolphin Boy, or all the others, there is that thing that um, um, the movies have this bitter sweetness in them. So, uh, and what is, it's, there is, I don't think, not better time than now, uh, not more appropriate time than now to think of taking the sad song and make it better. Because I feel like we are now also in some kind of a bittersweet time. You know, it's a little bit bitter because of everything that's going on. People are losing their work. Some people lose their health. And it's also sweet because, uh, A, we're all in this together. We realize that in many ways we're all one. And we can spend time with our family. And, yes, we can create. We can watch movies. All those things that we said, oh, where will I have time? to do that we have time now so that's the sweetness of uh, where we are now i'm so glad yeah. someone has the time right now <laughs> yeah 
and, and you know you, you brought something up and, and one of the really neat things about this opportunity as we've been driven out of our physical space and, and onto the virtual airwaves here, it's an opportunity for, for us to reach beyond our San Diego audience. And mm. I know just tonight, a couple, couple of my friends and, and family have tuned in and, and it's neat just to acknowledge uh, my sister and my parents are in Baltimore, Maryland. A uh, friend of mine in San Diego, San Diego native uh, who's now in Dallas, Alana Miller is here. So when, when I met you and Chris last month, we all had a, a wonderful time together. It was great spending the time. And I was telling some people about my experience and about the film festival. Now, given the circumstances, it turns out we're able to share on a greater level. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it's really fun and we're doing it because, uh, you know, for us, it's an opportunity to reach out uh, to a lot of, to, to big uh, crowd of, audience uh, from our home we never thought about it and, and it's it's incredible i in fact i just told my mom it's uh, almost six o'clock in the morning in israel and uh, maybe she will be up as well <laughs> uh, so you may have also some people from overseas now that that'd be great and i think it's just to expand our mission from building community and building jewish community in the san diego area and building a bridge to people of other faiths and other walks of life in, in town now it's it's global, and suddenly just the, like we were saying, that reach has become so much greater. And if if your mom happens to join in, and we get somebody from Israel, that'd be that'd be fantastic too. And I, I think it's it's nice for a chance for for people to to be able to share their work on a on a larger scale now. And I imagine that for you as a filmmaker, that's part of the motivation every day is telling those stories. And uh, part of the the Beacon Award that you were given is for for taking little known stories and putting them onto a, onto a larger scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, when, when I started my career, I remember one of the guys I, I worked for and his name is Alex Giladi. He was the vice president also of NBC. And he gathered all the young emerging filmmakers, directors, TV guys. And they he told him one time, do you realize what you're doing? Do you realize that you are touching the infinity? You're touching something that will stay much longer than after you will not be here. So that's what I feel about every movie that I'm making. You know, I'm touching something that will stay and will be with me much way longer than after I will not be here. After we all not going to be here. I think the movie movies will stay, the, the, all, all the things we're creating, they are going to stay here. So um, I feel very fortunate that I can tell stories that also touch people's life. And some people tell me, oh, wow, it changed my life. It, it shaked me. And, uh, you know, uh, for me, you know, if I could entertain the audience and make them laugh, cry, think, about things and, and be more kind. Wow. That's, Hi guys. That's incredible. Hey, look who made it. Had to restart is, there. Is it Chris? <laughs> Christopher Gulich. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh. Chris, so you, I, missed, I, you missed all the wonderful <laughs> things that, that uh, Danny and I said about you. So you just have to believe that it happened. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, when we talk about bitter sweetness, I think one of the things that I found immediately about working with Chris is that he has exactly that element because 39 pounds of love is a story about a guy I met in Israel that weighs 39 pounds because of rare form of muscle dystrophy that he has. Doctors thought he's not going to pass the age, of, the age of six and he was 34 years old at the time. And he wanted to go cross country in the United States to look for the doctor that thought he's not going to pass the age of six. And he was doing animations with one finger. The only finger he could move, he could control the mouth and make animations. And they were part of the movie. And whenever I talked to musicians, they all thought, oh, let me 
show you some very emotional pieces of music and sometimes sad and and I, and I didn't see the movie that way as, at all, you know, and, and Ami, my character, didn't see his story that way. We saw it as a celebration of life. And Chris came to me with music for, for circus. It was really circus music. <laughs> and, and, and Chris, if you're there, uh, are you able from your memory uh, to play us the ta na na ta na na That was the theme of the, of, 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 of the movie. And we incorporated it almost in every piece of music that we <laughs> made in the film. Every place there was a, the moment of the na 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 ta na na So much so that, Chris, I don't know if I've ever told you that when I, at some point, by the way, when we shot the movie, we always told people we're going to, it's a movie that we're doing for HBO. Now you need to understand the movie had no money. It was our own credit card. Uh, we're a bunch of guys going out there, uh, not knowing anything, but we just told people we're making that film for HBO. Not even imagining that, and by the way, HBO at first told us just no. And we kept going to them, and at some point they saw it. They saw what we thought was the fine cut, but they saw the rough cut. And then they have um, just uh, bought it. And they said, you know, we're here, we're adapting you. But everyone at the 13th floor of HBO just kept on, kept on saying, you know, singing Chris's music. Ta na na, ta na na. Whenever we. When, whenever we cut the music, the, 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 the movie, people saw, it, saw me, in, saw me like in, in the third floor, walking, going to the bathroom. They said, ta na na, ta na na. <laughs> so Chris, g- give us that piece of music, if you can. Oh my gosh, you're gonna kill me for that, right? <laughs> Chris Freeze, I think we, went, we, went, we, went, we lost Chris again. I, th- I think Chris just uh, went to the shelter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said, I will show you what it is to make music. I, I, Why are I, you, Chris? Chris, just, uh, he, he's, I think he's having some connection issues. Um, but if you, if you will play the trailer from my website or anything, you'll, you'll be able to hear that. Okay. Uh, let, let, me, let me ask you this, and hopefully Chris rejoins us soon. I wanted to know, how did you guys meet? And, and you tell the story a little bit of how the composers were bringing you sad songs and Chris brought the circus music. When, yeah. did you, when did you first meet Chris? So I, he came to my very small editing booth in Marina del Rey and I met him and I said to my producer, you know, I don't even know why I'm meeting with, with musicians. You know, they can be nice, they can be not nice. It's all about the music. I mean, you hear music, you don't care if the guy is nice or not. I mean, there is a big advantage that he's nice and, and Chris happened to be also nice, but I just told him, look, yeah, and there was another guy coming to us and working with uh, George Lucas and, and, and there were many composers. And at some point I told my producer, I, I don't want to meet with them anymore. I just want to hear the music. So I sat for hours and hours and I heard every piece of music people sent us and it was tons of music. And at some point, I told Daniel Chaffon, our, our producer, I said, there is one by far better than anyone else. And that was the music of uh, Chris. And because he sent me uh, happy music, it was not a sad movie in my view, and it was uh, happy music. So you, you met or you knew Chris's music before you ever met Chris in the flesh, is that right? For me, the, the best thing that happens is when I meet the creation before the creator. <laughs> because in many ways, I can sense the person from his creation. From when I hear, when I see a piece of art, you know, that's, that's what comes to me. You know, when I read someone's writing, you know, I, I, I can get him much more than if I'm just going to sit with him. So, um, and, I, and I can see that it's aligned with, with, there is a really wonderful chemistry with what I am looking for. 
And that was 2004 or 05 when? Yeah, first... yeah, yeah, yeah. It was even before. I think it was 2003, four. Yeah. And yeah, 39 that... pounds of love was 05. Is that correct? Yeah, we finished it on 04. We thought we finished it. And then HBO said, mm, well, you didn't finish it. We're going to pay and we're going to edit it <laughs> and, and make it better. And, uh, and they did. And the movie was shortlisted for the Oscars. It was, went for theatrical all over the United States. It won many awards and uh, great reviews at the New York Times, won the Israeli Academy Awards. Um, we're, we're thrilled with what happened with it. And, uh, and then I've been known for the guy who's doing road trip movies. <laughs> so that's when people approach me to do picture of his life. That's how I met Jonathan. And we have worked on Dolphin Boy because the story of Amos and picture of his life. And all those movies you can see on, on my website, at least the trailer. And then some of the movies you can also find links to see them uh, full in, at Amazon Prime. But um, um, that's how we also made the Dolphin Boy. And then uh, and when we finished Dolphin Boy, Disney said, oh, you know, we like that movie so much, we want to make it a narrative. So they tried to make it, and uh, after three years, their option came back to me, and I said, why, they should, why should they make it? You know, I know how to, to write it, and that's kind of where we are now with, with it. Gotcha. Well, it looks like Chris is back. So while he's here, we better ask him some questions quickly. <laughs> it turns out my... I. My, one of my music applications is crashing Zoom. So uh, mm. uh, anyway, we're, you know, we're learning. This is, this is all. Uh, new, your music is crashing. Your music, yeah. your, music, yeah. your music is always crashing. So I just wanted to, uh, to ask if you could do the ta-na-na, ta-na-na, but if that crashes your Zoom. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll have to go with the way you hum it. <laughs> 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 um, no, no. I'm sorry to miss all the wonderful things you guys are saying. Um, I heard Danny say something about bittersweet. Where did that mm -hmm. come from? I, I think it was in um, talking about 39 pounds of love and finding the music for it. And while you were rebooting, Danny told the story of how you were the only, only composer who brought happy music. Oh, that, and you know what? And we both, we both really love the Beatles and there's something so inherently happy and poppy about them that I think that really, you know, we, we love that. They're, um, uh, I think the bittersweet is, it's, it's also a deeply, it's, a, it's very romantic. And I think that's something else we share. Mm -hmm. We're romantics. There you go. Mm -hmm. So Danny gave his side of the story of, of when you two first met each other and it was through the music. For you, Chris, how much of of the film had you seen to be able to to compose the way you did? Um, I, I mean, eventually I saw the entire movie, um, and it, you know, it's obviously something. It was a process that went on for I don't know, Danny, a, a couple of years, I guess. Um, yeah, it was a year, one year. Yeah, one year from long. <laughs> But it, no, it was wonderful. Like I was really excited to see the animations and the fact that it sort of lives, but that movie especially lives between this world where you're sort of getting inside of Ami's head. And that was kind of the journey that, that I went on to understand, um, you know, what, that he's a, there's a person in there, you know, and he's a, he's a man and he's, you know, he's, um, he, uh, I don't know. It was just, it was being able to see things from his point of view. And that was it. That was a, the journey into that. And um, like, like, I think that's what Danny was saying, finding somebody that could kind of understand uh, the joy that was there. He's a, he's an amazingly charismatic person. And he would, when we met him, he came to the studio and there were, I think Danny, you showed up with like 15, 10 or 15 people. It seemed like there were a lot of people. It was Wonderful. Big gang, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, then after that collaborate, or sorry, Chris, you know, go on. There, there are things that you can do with music. It's, it's amazing, yeah. Yeah, well, and, and it's wonderful. It's all motifs, like writing. Danny is such a storyteller. Um, and 
writing is all about finding themes and like little themes within bigger themes and these repeating motifs. And Danny will come to me and be like, oh, we're gonna need, we need the searching music. And there's three searches and you know, the first search is exciting. The second search is sort of pensive. And then the third search is more triumphant. And then, so it's right there. You immediately have one theme with sort of three variations on top of it. Uh, it's, it's really wonderful. And it's obviously such a, it's kind of a wayfinding it's a wonderful wayfinding technique for um, any director. So after that initial connection through 39 pounds, yes. you've collaborated a couple times since, uh, at least the two most recent ones were both on display at the film festival this year. As your relationship has grown, how has that impacted the collaborating and Chris, your ability to, to score the way that you think Danny would want it and understand what, what the story is going to be about. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful. I feel like there's a lot of trust from Danny about what I do. Um, and it's in fact, we, we spend, we probably don't spend as much time as we'd like to on the music. It's always at the very end of the movie. And I know Danny's got a million other things. He's usually on to his next project by the time he's wrapping one up. <laughs> um, um, so I think that trust is really important, you know, because he's working very, he's working very quickly on a hundred different, things speaking of, of working on things we got to talk to danny about this uh, in the beginning it's an important question how are you how's everything going locked up in your house and uh, what are you up to what have you been doing me or danny? yes yes you chris <laughs> well no i've still been i'm actually lucky i work here at home and this is my this is my studio in my converted garage back here and so it honestly hasn't it hasn't changed very much uh, for me, you know. My son's home from school, and um, we're working on classes, and he's doing the Zoom thing. You know, that's what gave me the courage for this tonight. I'm like, well, <laughs> all those kids can do it. It can't. How it can't be that hard? Um, uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm really surprised at how little it's changed my life. I cook at home a lot anyway. Um, I feel like everybody else has kind of slowed down to to my speed these days. <laughs> So now everyone's now in your way and yeah <laughs> yeah no and i think this will be the way of the future anyway it's it's we have such an amazing technology a lot of people you know they drive long distances to jobs that you have to buy a lot of expensive clothes for and there's all these added expenses when a lot i think people could be very productive at home you know yeah commutes have been a lot easier lately yeah <laughs> Uh, so Danny and Chris, for, for either of you here, when, when you guys are, are together and not working, what, what happens? You know, just see, seeing you two in San Diego last month, th there was just a, a lot of positive chemistry and, and just energy. Uh, is, this, is this what enables you guys to be so successful together? Mm -hmm. uh, or just lucky where Danny you were saying before Chris you might have been rebooting at that point that when it comes to the music Danny wasn't so concerned about the person behind it could be a good guy could be a bad guy as long as the music's good uh, but you two obviously have a flow together what's you know what happens when when you're not working but you're talking what happens when when we log off this zoom um <laughs> there's a lot of um uh, well, I've, lately I've been working with Danny on, you know, promoting, um, promoting his latest movies and putting things online. Like, mm -hmm. I think we just, we just love working together. I'm, I, you know, I happen to be one of his biggest fans, so it, it makes everything delightful, really. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like you, like you said, Ryan, you know, uh, somebody said there is nothing faster than the speed of trust. And uh, when you have trust with people, and, and I would say, you know, it's, it's a huge advantage when you work with people that you like and they're fun to work with. And for me and Chris, uh, we're just finding the theme. As, as soon as we found the theme of the, of the story, the bulk of the story, what it is, the whole music is easy. So with Picture of His Life, it was the polar bear. You know, we always heard the polar bear. The polar bear thing was 
was something that we always kept having there. It was so important for us that, you know, music wise, and a lot of credit we want also to give to our partner, Philip Goslan, who did our uh, sound design. And uh, Jonathan and I were very thrilled to work with uh, in Italy, in Trento, actually, before everything. Um, so we both with, yeah, we all went, you know, Chris and I flew to Italy and we, uh, we work with our sound designer and on the music. And the second thing is that uh, we have a fun video uh, that I don't know if we are able to find now and share that we are looking for moments of intensity. And Chris just, you know, I'm, I'm going to show it here on, on, with my hands. We're just playing with the piano like this. And these, these were the moments of the intensity when the boat is actually looking for, for the polar bear because that's what, you know, we felt almost represent. Like he's intense, there are elements of fear, at least for the audience, and it's important for the movie to have that. And, uh, and we found it. And, uh, and when we found it, you know, the other things are easier for us to, to bring. The emotions are things that come to us naturally. We're there. And we love it. And, the, and, and it would all say it was the heartbeat. When we found the element of the heartbeat, boom, 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 boom. We got it. Okay, that's it. Here, this is, that's the thing. So we can build everything around the heartbeat, because Olsi is one big heart and hell of a story. And we felt that with all the elements, you know, sometimes we said, oh, something needs to be there. What should it be? The answer was always the theme. And the theme was, again, the, the heartbeat. Yeah, that's wonderful. There's, there's a heartbeat al underneath almost every piece of music um, throughout the movie. Yeah. But you're right, and that's where a theme really helps you out when you're like, what do we do now? It's like, well, this comes back to the theme. <laughs> it's, it helps, it's always a, it's a convenient guidepost and it sort of, it always helps you come back to what you should be saying when you're not quite sure what to do next. It's your that's guide. That's interesting. That's, um, that's... But yes, I, what you were just saying though, like we had so much fun that it was wonderful to be there for the, the film festival and um, it, it felt like a vacation. It was, it was wonderful to be down there. I was glad that Danny, you know, invited me and I had the opportunity to come down and everyone was really wonderful. Um, that, um, to me, that felt uh, like a break from work. You know, I don't, I know that is Danny's work, but uh, it was, it was definitely wonderful. I had a great time. And Danny had, had spoken to this earlier and, and Chris, since you are in your home office and the dynamics a bit different for you. I'm still curious. It seems like out of difficult times, there's always great art that emerges. And this situation is, I, I, I would call it unique to, to the country, of course. Um, I, I've seen a lot of people asking the question, what are you creating now? And, and now that people are home and things have to slow down, do you think that there will be more creativity in general that, that comes out of the next weeks and months as, as the country hunkers down here? Uh, has it changed? Uh, it hasn't changed you much, I don't think, because you've got your studio right there. But do you think it's going to impact film, music, art in general? Yeah, I, I mean, I think so. Obviously, for the short term, um, production is shut down. Like TV production, I know Netflix shut its production down. So we're, there's going to be a big sort of hole in, I think, the entertainment lineup um, for the next year, maybe. You know, obviously movies, they're delaying the release and that does nothing but help people that are sort of DIY and making their own content. It's a, it's a wonderful, you know, opportunity. And, you know, you look, that's where we're going anyway with uh, companies like Netflix that are just buying pre-made content. It's like these, we're living in a time where you can really do it all yourself, you know? Um, so I, I feel lucky that I have a little, you know, micro, a little micro system here of creating my own products and sending them out to the world without having to go out and get sick. <laughs> do you have friends or anyone who's 
kind of checked in with you over the last couple of weeks who people who are doing interesting or new things, anybody you've been, and you know, Danny, you too, just anything, anyone that's impressed you in terms of, Oh, wow, this person's actually taking this slowdown to create this or that, or, or, you know, really anything. I think, I think zoom is doing amazing <laughs> as a company. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I uh, seeing the seeing the restaurants around Los Angeles, you know, immediately switch to this takeout service and mm -hmm. even being allowed to send out alcohol and stuff. I think, you know, that's that's the future. And I think seeing movies going direct, releasing movies now direct on, you know, uh, Prime, that, that's just sort of hastening along something that was going to happen anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you you can say a joke that you know you can, you must make great art. You cannot make any shitty movie because there are no more toilet papers. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> but I, I I would say really, you know, there is you you also think about it that uh, it reminds you that that we're we're really temporary here. We're no matter what, you know, we are temporary here. So what we are doing with our life every moment is something that we need to we need to think. Every every day, every moment that we have is is a gift, and we can if we use it. Uh, for for me, every moment that I I don't use for cre creating is I would not say it's wasted money because because I I'm doing other wonderful things but for me even when i cook or when when i'm with my kids i mean it's it's part of uh, creating but when i write or i'm i have to say that it's not because chris gubish is here you know when i'm when 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 i'm involved with music for me even making the movies is part of music i mean i i, I was a musician but I cannot make music as, as Chris does. You know, I'm, I'm not a musician. I don't even know how to play the piano. I mean, I have piano right here uh, behind me, but that's for my kids to play and I, and I don't even use it at all. But the way I see movies, the way I write uh, screenplays is the way people I think think of music. And if you'll see my movie, uh, Is That You? It's on Amazon Prime. You can find it also on my website. And that is a movie that I, I, I almost can say that I wrote it as a music piece. And the way I saw it, and I, I felt it's, it's a music piece. So, you know, our life, I mean, I, that's the way I, I see life. That's interesting. That's, that's great. I just Simple question here because the Beatles keep coming up. Yes. What's what are the what's the go to album for you, Chris? Um, I, I I love them all, and I you know sometimes I'm in love with Rubber Soul again. Sometimes I'm in a White Album kind of mood. Uh, you know, um, I I. It's it's the production uh, obviously of the Beatles uh, that, I, that I love as much as the music. Um, it's just it's just delightful pop music that just uh, is full color. Yeah, and I think that's what you know. I feel like Danny's storytelling is very much that way. It's he tells these sort of full color. They're they're these beautiful, fully conceived, brightly colored stories that sort of touch on all the emotions. You know. Um, um, yeah, I, I just wanted to say one other thing to your question about how art may change or to respond mm -hmm. to this. Um, I, I do think we're, we're getting a big, a, every, this is a big wake up call for everybody. We're seeing a stress test for a lot of different systems and our paradigm is getting rocked a bit and that's always good for art and expression and it's good for everybody in general, you know, despite however, you know, whatever inconveniences or difficulties might come out of this. I think everybody is getting a bit of a sort of a, you know, a shift in perspective. And that's a, that's a great opportunity. It's interesting. And that from, from what I've seen out there, it, it seems to be the artists and musicians who are championing the great reset 
And you <laughs> don't really hear that from Wall Street so much. <laughs> That's true. No, they want business as usual. Yeah, well, we have a, a smaller crowd tonight, so I, I think we can try it. If anybody has a question, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we can we can go for the the unmute option and, and see how it plays out. And since we're going to be spending a lot more time on Zoom, if if anybody out there would like to raise his or her hand and, and speak up, I, I think Maxine might have a question. Abby, can you unmute her? Um, yeah, I just gave everyone the ability to unmute themselves. So there you go, Maxine. You should be able to. Hello, everyone. Maxine, do you have a question? I just wondered where Chris is. I, I didn't hear where you are, Chris. Oh, I, can you see me, Maxine? Can you? Yes, I can. And I just want to know where you're hanging out. Oh, I'm in my, uh, this is my studio garage at my house. Where is that? Um, I'm in Los Angeles, sort of central LA near Larchmont Village, if you know where that is. Oh, okay. And Danny, where are you? In Israel now, where? Border Ranch, Los Angeles. Oh, <laughs> ah, okay. in California. Yeah, we're in Los Angeles. Yeah. Oh, Maxine, how are you doing? We're fine. We're we're adjusting. It's good. Yeah. Try to how, are, every day. Are, are you are, are you guys adjusting? Are you um, quarantine? Are you going out? We're we're in. We're not shopping. We're we're buying online, and some neighbors are shopping for us, so we're fine. I don't want to go out to the stores, but we go out for walks, and we listen to people on JCC and and at the synagogue, and there are lots of classes and programs that we can do, and we try to do good things every day. I called Governor Cuomo today and told him about a paint store in. Uh, San Diego that actually manufactures uh, masks and I was hoping that maybe he could get some for New York. What did you, what did they say? Did you have any luck? I, 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 I left a couple of messages and I actually spoke to someone on the hotline at the, the uh, coronavirus line in New York and gave them the information. They gave me um, a website where I could, uh, an address where I could write to Governor Cuomo. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. I try to stay in contact with a lot of people in Pennsylvania. We live in two places. So I, I call Pennsylvania a lot. I do a lot of politicking for certain people that I'm supporting. I'm a committee person for the Democratic Party in Pennsylvania. And, um, and I just have lots of friends that I stay in contact with and, and um, people stay in contact with me. It's lovely to get calls from the JCC from my daughter and from other people. I, I guess I'm on the line, on the senior line. <laughs> yes, Abby, how are you? <laughs> Hi, Maxine. I know we've chatted. I, you were, your number was assigned to me for those phone calls, so good to see you. <laughs> nice to see you, honey. <laughs> I have a question for Danny and Chris. Talking about the creative process, which I know looks different for Chris composition-wise and for Danny production and director-wise, what is the most difficult part for you? Is there a part that you reach during your process where you're like, ah, oh, man, this is, this is going to be tough. It's the same for every film or every piece that you're composing. Is it different? What do you struggle with? Um, for me personally, um, and I think it's true for uh, some of my independent colleagues that we are independent filmmakers and, uh, and we struggle with the process of raising money because we have an idea and it's in our head and we try to communicate it but that, I, until people see it on screen with an audi with audience it's hard for them to imagine what we're about to do and there is a big level of trust that needs to be there so i'm lucky now that i can show my portfolio and people see that a lot of those films are award winning and and the audience like them, but still you come up with a new story and okay, who knows <laughs> what will be there. And uh, so that's part of the, I would say the challenge and that's possibly the opportunity to say that we have uh, 
on Hey Jude Productions, our uh, non-for-profit on the map foundation, and people can come and support and donate, and it's all tax deductible. And we're having a big event on Sunday uh, with on the map and Tal Brody, which we're doing for free. And Olsi actually, Olsi will be with us online as well Great. from Israel. And um, it's going to be on Sunday at noon or public open to the San Diego community. Maybe we'll do something with Bill Walton with San Diego <laughs> later on. I know, um, Ryan, that we try to do that as well. So that's... Um, possibly, you know, the challenging part, uh, telling a story and uh, uh, writing the screenplay, uh, directing, editing is, is, for me, it's, it's a lot of fun. And music is the icing on the cake. I can't wait to be the part that I'm making music. And for me to be with Chris, you know, over there in, in this bubble, <laughs> making that music is, is heavenly. It's just like, that's when you know you've crossed the finish line. Oh my gosh, yeah. That's, that's the finish line. It's not crossing. It's, the, well, it's, the, it's where, um, yeah, it's, everything comes together. Uh, Danny, is Alsi going to be in the, in the theaters at all? How does that work? We, lo uh, we love seeing it at the film festival. So the answer, the short answer is yes, it will be in the theater. And uh, the longer answer is when there will be theater. And so for now, we're all asking ourselves the same question. What will happen? Because it, the movie started to be on a roll. It won with you guys uh, at the San Diego Jewish Film Festival, the Audience Awards. And we were starting to get so many requests. It was about to be the opening night in Toronto Jewish Film Festival. And uh, I was about to get another award <laughs> in Seattle. I was on my way and nobody goes now to Seattle as well. <laughs> you know, we'll see what will happen. As, as, as I said before, you know, what's, what I love about making movies, it's that they will stay forever. I know all see Picture of His Life, Dolphin Boy, 39 Pound of Love, Is That You, All those films that are I have, they will stay much longer than I will be here on Earth. So whatever will need to happen with them will happen. And, and whoever wants to see or meet all see in person, and he will be with us on, uh, on Sunday. We're probably going to have a lot of people for, for Zoom, so we will also open it for our Facebook fan as well. So, so the website was heyjudeproductions.com. Hey .com. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I sent I don't you know the chat, Maxine. So if you open the chat function within Zoom, I sent the link right in there, so you should be able to, to open it up right from the chat. Yeah. And to Ryan's questions, by the way, Abby wrote, yeah, Abbey Road is the, my number one favorite. <laughs> like, by far, by far, Abbey Road. And there, it's all great, but Abbey Road, yeah. It's, it's like, it's like God touched it. Yeah, the medleys. Yeah. Um, Chris, you have an answer to Abby's question with the, the most challenging part of the process? I. Or you can just play the Abbey Road medley right behind you, either or. <laughs> yeah, the, I, uh, Abbey, re Abbey reminded us of Abbey Road. Yeah, Danny and I have been working on the harmonies. Hang on. <laughs> I think, no, I think I, Danny's right. I, it's um, a lot of the real work in art is is doing all the rest of the work around the art, you know, like um, I, I, Danny's always talking about being his own businessman and you're constantly, it's the art is not really the struggle. Um, it's sort of putting everything else into, into place. Um, it's just amazing. I think what, what I'm working with Danny, meeting him 12 years ago on 39 Pounds of Love, and here we are today, um, you know, a lot of it is just, it's time. Things just have to evolve and, you know, and, and you can't, you know, you can't rush things along. And it's what you do with your life in the, the, the meantime. Danny's been reduced mm -hmm. to a glass. Oh, 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 o
Well, this has been great. And I think this is probably a nice time to, to end the evening before the internet has the way with, has its way with us again. Um, Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Chris, very much. It's nice to see you both again. Uh, a reminder to everybody still out there, on Monday, we're going to meet again. We're going to bring the Arts and Ideas programs back to Zoom. Uh, we will have author Tiffany Schlein. Uh, her most recent book, 24-6, was published about six months ago. It's now more timely than ever. It's about unplugging one day a week. It's what she calls the technology Shabbat. And it's a rule she enforces in her house. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited to hear from her because we're all plugged in more than ever right now. And I don't know when that's going to end. And I think as we're navigating these waters, it'd be great to hear from somebody who, who might actually have a playbook, you know, in a, in a scenario where there is none. Uh, so Monday, 7.30 San Diego time, Tiffany Shalane will be talking about unplugging and, and how we unplug in this very plugged in uh, day that we're living in now. Uh, once again, thank you to Chris. Thank you to Danny. Thank you everybody for joining. Abby McCarthy, what do you got? <laughs> uh, I'm going to send in the chat of the group, I'm going to send a few links. So the first is to the Lawrence Family JCC virtual site. So that had all of the live programs that we've recorded like this, um, as well as some on-demand programs, links to any short films, any feature films that um, other Jewish organizations are, are sharing on there as well as uh, virtual programs from other departments within the JCC. So I'm going to share that. I share the link to the San Diego International Jewish Film Festival Facebook. So if you're on Facebook and you're not in that group, definitely join. We post about events like this and other film festival related things. And then I'm going to post the link to the LFJCC Facebook page. So you'll see and hear all of the great programming that's going on from the J. So I'm going to those now. Feel free to copy them, click them. And then finally, if, you're, if you don't get our emails from the Arts and Ideas team at the U.S. Center for Jewish Culture, I sent that link as well. So feel free to sign up and put your email in there. We've been sending email almost every day about our virtual programming and then crazy new virtual world that we're living in. <laughs> that's all I had to say. Thanks, Abby. Yeah, no problem. It was a pleasure, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you very much.